Hi, this is Dr. Ramon Rodriguez, and I welcome you back to the Parkinson's Doctor channel. Uh, today, I will be speaking about multiple system atrophy, a condition that is very frequently confused with Parkinson's disease. So I will be uh, today discussing what are uh, the typical symptoms and the cause of uh, multiple system atrophy. And the next video will be a comparison between multiple system atrophy and Parkinson's disease. So I, um, I, I suggest that you subscribe to the channel. Just make sure that you subscribe uh, by hitting the uh, button below uh, this video. And that way you will receive an alert when the new video is published, what will happen, uh, will, it will happen uh, possibly later this week. But today we will have a summary of multiple system atrophy and I really hope that you find this useful. And uh, to begin, um, multiple, uh, multiple system atrophy is a uh, rare uh, neurodegenerative disorder that affects both the central and autonomic nervous system. And the central nervous system, as we know, controls uh, voluntary movements such as walking and speaking. However, the autonomic nervous system regulates involuntary functions like blood pressure, and uh, digestion, for example, and MSA causes a gradual loss of the nerve cells in different parts of the brain and the spinal cord, leading to various symptoms uh, that impair movement, balance, coordination, and other body functions. The exact cause of MSA is unknown, but it's not inherited and it's not contagious. Those two things we, we know and we have learned over the year. And we believe that this is a condition that is caused by the abnormal accumulation of a protein called alpha, alpha synuclein in specific nerve cells. And we heard about alpha synuclein before because it is also the exact same protein that deposits in the brain of people with Parkinson's disease and people with uh, Lewy body disease. And what happened is that with the accumulation of these uh, alpha synuclein, or particularly phosphorylated alpha synuclein, uh, this interfere with the function between the brain cells and their survival. So MSA usually begins in the person's 50s or 60s and progresses quickly over five to 10 years. And unfortunately, there is no cure for MSA. And up to today, we do not have a treatment that can stop or reverse the course of this condition. However, there are some medications and therapy that can help manage uh, some of the symptoms associated with multiple system atrophy, MSA, and improve the quality of life. Now, when we speak about MSA, we need to discuss the two uh, main types of, uh, of the presentation of this condition. Depending on the predominant symptoms at the time of the diagnosis, MSA is classified as either the Parkinsonian type, which, which we call the MSA-P, or the cerebellar type, which we call the MSA-C. An MSA-P, which is MSA Parkinsonism, is characterized by symptoms similar to Parkinson's disease, such as slowness uh, of movement, stiffness, tremors, uh, problems with posture and balance. And this is why uh, this condition is very frequently uh, uh, confused with Parkinson's disease, and I have to say that almost everyone with uh, multiple system atrophy is initially diagnosed with Parkinson's disease and eventually were able to make the correct diagnosis uh, of uh, multiple system atrophy. And then MSAC, which is MSA cerebellar, is characterized by symptoms related to the cerebellum, which is the part of the brain that controls coordination and balance. And this includes with difficulty swallowing, speech problems, and normalized movements, and clumsiness, especially when the person is walking. And both types of MSA also involve autonomic dysfunction, which can cause urinary problems, sweating, abnormalities, uh, digestion difficulties, fainting spells, and sexual dysfunction, which actually can be one of the first symptoms associated with um, MSA. MSA is typically diagnosed based on clinical features. So it is about the doctor having a conversation with you and performing a physical examination and trying to put all the pieces together. And in order to make a diagnosis, your doctor will obtain a medical history. Your doctor will perform a physical examination. 
There might be some other tests that can rule out other conditions, and these tests might include a blood test, imaging tests such as a, an MRI, autonomic function tests such as a tilt table test or blood pressure monitoring, sleep studies to detect REM, sleep behavior disorder, and nerve conduction studies to assess for nerve damage. However, there is no specific test that can confirm MSA definitely. So not the MRI, not a DAT scan, um, not a PET scan, none of them unfortunately can make a 100% diagnosis of um, MSA. Now remember that MSA is one of those conditions where the DAT scan uh, will be positive in that patient population. Now let's talk about the treatment of MSA. And, and the treatment of MSA is actually very challenging. And every time we speak about uh, the potential treatment, we talk about symptomatic treatment and supportive treatment, meaning that uh, we're trying to relieve the symptoms and improve the function of the affected systems. Depending on the type and the severity of the symptoms, different medications might be prescribed to help with the movement problems. And so we're talking about levodopa or a dopamine agonist. We need to talk about blood pressure control, such as uh, fludocortisone or mitodrine, bladder control, where we can use medications such as uh, oxybutynin and tolterodine, and we have to speak about constipation, which is very common in this condition, and there are multiple laxatives or stool softeners that can be used. For the erectile dysfunction, uh, some people may benefit from uh, sildenafil or uh, tadalafil, the very well-known uh, medications used for this condition, and then those that are suffering from sleep problems, they can benefit from melatonin or uh, clonazepam. However, be aware that uh, there are multiple non-pharmacological therapies that I believe are critical uh, when we speak about the treatment of people with multiple system atrophy. In first place, physical therapy to help improve uh, mobility and balance, occupational therapy to assist with daily activities, speech therapy to improve swallowing and uh, communication, respiratory therapy to prevent aspiration pneumonia, nutritional counseling to ensure adequate hydration and calorie intake, and psychological counseling uh, to cope with emotional stress. And this is something that can benefit both patients as well as the uh, caregivers. Uh, there is no proven way to prevent MSA or slow down its progression. However, I do believe that um, getting involved in a regular exercise program might help reduce some of the risk or complications of these conditions and uh, can improve uh, the well-being at the same time. And also, we want to avoid uh, dehydration, uh, salt uh, restriction, alcohol consumption, smoking, caffeine intake, and extreme temperatures because this can uh, exacerbate some of the symptoms associated with the condition. We do recommend to wear compression stockings or abdominal binders. This can help with the orthostatic hypotension. Uh, some people might benefit from using a cane, a walker, wheelchair, or, or even bed rails to prevent falls. And then elevating the head of the bed to reduce uh, the nocturnal hypertension, which we also call a supine hypertension, uh, might be a good practice because sometimes there can be very wide fluctuations in this uh, condition. Now, MSA is a, is a rare condition, but it affects between 15 and 50,000 Americans. And MSA exact prevalence and incidence are known because there are multiple diagnostic challenges. I mentioned earlier that most people with MSA are actually uh, diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, and they feel that they may not be responding well to their, to their medicines as Parkinson's, when in fact what they have is, um, is multiple system atrophy. The average onset uh, for this condition is 54 years old for MSAP, the Parkinsonian type, and 59 years old for the people suffering from MSAC, which is the cerebellar type. And the average survival after the diagnosis uh, goes between 6 and 14 years uh, for both uh, conditions. The most common cause of death in this patient population are respiratory failure, uh, pneumonia, cardiac arrest, and sudden unexplained death. So, you know, it's very important that you follow up with your doctor, you have a, a proper conversation, and um, you also have advanced uh, uh, directive. Uh, and, and I believe that the earlier you do this, the better, because as physicians, we want to be sure that we follow your wishes. And it doesn't mean when we're doing this that you're gonna die within a week or a month, but obviously, uh, 
we want to make these decisions and we want to have this conversation when you're able to make your own uh, decisions. This is a condition that poses many challenges for patients, uh, caregivers, healthcare uh, uh, providers, and there is an urgent need for more research to understand this condition, particularly the mechanism, biomarkers, and the treatment of MSA. There are multiple uh, uh, clinical studies going on, clinical trial testing new drugs or an intervention for MSA. Uh, so much of these drugs include uh, rosagilin, uh, rifampicin, and broxol, mesenchymal stem cells, transcranial magnetic stimulation, and deep brain stimulations. And these trials offer some hope for finding effective therapies for MSA in the future, and we're very excited about this. However, be aware that more funding and awareness are needed to support the research efforts and improve the care and the quality of life of people with MSA. Uh, one of the main challenges from this condition as well is that you know we don't have a lot of uh, support groups, right? And there is not a lot of expertise in the uh, medical community about uh, making um, this diagnosis uh, correctly. So many people with MSA, once again, they live a long life thinking that they have Parkinson's disease. And sometimes what happens is that, you know, they are looking for a second opinion and it is not until they see a movement disorder specialist that we can make this diagnosis properly. With this, I, I really hope that you learned something about MSA Remember that uh, you can connect with our uh, sister website, learnaboutparkinson.com. And uh, the plan is actually to have a script about um, uh, this lecture so you can access it in a, in a written format and discuss it with your friends or family members or caregivers so you can have a better plan of action. I really hope that you find this information to, to be helpful. And uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. That way you will be able to I have access immediately to the uh, next videos as soon as they are published. Thank you very much.